This is the beginning of video number four. We are going to cover the float install, the controller install, and the installation of the curtain drain in front of the drain field. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I uh, appreciate you watching. The next float up is the off for the normal operating of the uh, fluid in the tank. And this upper float here is also the off for the working level in the tank. You can see the float attached to the pump, which is an emergency shutoff float down there. There it is. So that float comes attached to the pump. And this is kind of what it looks like. So there's the float tree, all the extra wires, everything's attached. Comes over, wires going to the junction box, comes out of the junction box, goes down the conduit, around the edge, and over to that panel. So that panel, we will go wire shortly. So I'm wiring up the control panel right now. Uh, I've got the ground and these are the wires that go to the pump inside the septic tank. So I've crimped on um, the style connectors that go to the spades. And those are crimped on. In this case, the black goes to black and the black wire comes in up top. Out of the way. Okay, so the pump's hooked up. We'll do the ground when we do the grounds off of the power supplies. Uh, this first set, which we color-coded green here, um, is the float at the bottom. So it is the low-level shutoff, and this is labeled inside of this specific panel, low-level cutout. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up these two wires to that. And uh, I just stripped off a little bit of insulation off each end. I have a... loop bracket. So this is a 10 gauge wire and the yellow ones are 10 gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp these on and then I will undo the screw and I'll put this in there. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. What I'm saying is you don't have to use these type of connectors. You can just loosen the screw up and stick the wire on there, but these just make it stay a little bit in place a little bit better. So I like to use them. Our next one is our timer override and then our high alarm. Just know that when if you're doing this, um, follow the instructions that come with the panels. Follow the instruct. There's a lot of other instructions that'll come with this that talk about how to wire it. This recommends that you have a dual power supply, so you have uh, one set of power supplying power to the pump itself, and then another set of power supplying to the panel to control all the functions. Uh, I am going to wire it that way. I'm going to have a switch out here that will turn off the pump itself and then it will be hardwired into here for the panel so there'll be a switch right here uh, this is a pretty advanced panel there's a lot of extra features in here you've got the uh, hour meter and the cycle meter so how many hours the pump has been running and then how many cycles the pump has run through um, this is your dose meter basically it's two minutes for you set it for how many minutes you want it on out of how many hours of the day um, single breaker for a 120 pump this is not a 240 pump this is only a one or 115 not a 230 um, auto off and hand pump one so that would make the pump run manually um, normally this pump will this component will just be left in auto mode and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clip all these down and crimp the ends on and I'll get them wired up and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like so I have installed the power from the pump or power to the pump goes through here. This will be power coming in for the pump, power coming in for the panel. I've connected all the floats.
wiring up the panel. Um, the power comes in from the junction box down here. We'll put siding around this. I'll put a block of wood behind here shortly. It goes to a power cutoff switch that supplies power to the pump. Um, there's a separate wire that supplies power to the panel. So we have uh, our pump supply goes uh, to our uh, control board here, which is labeled inside behind here. You can't see it now. So pump supply is one and two, and then panel supply is three and four. So you just plug those wires into there. Pump supply comes up, goes to the breaker. This breaker then jumps back over and goes to this solenoid. This solenoid then runs down to the pump. Um, my pump is uh, here, so we've got hot and neutral, and everything is grounded to the board, and everything is grounded together. These uh, connections over here are all the float switches. So our top... Um, well, you know what? I can't read them right now because they're all covered up now, but I put them together based on what the wiring diagram behind it showed. Uh, the bottom one is an emergency low-level alarm, but our pump has one built in, so in this case it just, and it specifically says this inside of there, behind there, uh, it says to jumper them together. So I made a little jumper out of a piece of black wire, and I wired those together. So that's the bottom one down here you can't really see because it's behind all these wires is jumpered together. The rest of these go to the floats. This thing should be ready to go, uh, go turn on, so we will go turn the power on and test it out and get the uh, timer set and reset all of the meters to zero, and we'll be good to go. That's pretty much it for these panels. They're, they're pretty straightforward, and the, and the diagrams inside pretty much explain everything you need to know, um, as long as your plumbing supply store gives you the correct panel per your drawing. Um, if you get the wrong one, uh, well, good luck. <laughs> We are setting the control panel up uh, to make sure it works. So it currently is electrically energized. Uh, inside of here, you have an hour meter, this meter down here, and this measures how long, how many hours the pump has been running. This next meter up is cycle time, so how many cycles the pump has gone through. Uh, solenoid, this is the uh, hour dose meter, and this is what sets your pump to come on and off based on your septic design. Your septic design will specify how long your pump can run and how much water is supposed to go down through it and how long it's supposed to be shut off for. Um, you got some br a breaker over here that controls the pump, uh, your auto off and on switch, an extra fuse. So right now, based on the septic design for this house and his septic system, this meter, excuse me, this timer is set to for the pump to run for two minutes every four hours. Now you, you set that with the little dial. You can see when I spin this part, it moves the green knob to four hours. And the green knob corresponds to this little box up here that says hours in it. And you can change that to hours or, meet, or minutes depending on your system specifically. The red knob is the outer knob and that goes to two minutes and that knob corresponds to this box which is set for minutes. So two minutes every four hours. It's important to note when you test the system, you'll have to override that in order to check your water flow down at the beginning because when this is energized, it's automatically set to, to start by shutting off for four hours. So when it's energized and the, there's enough water to pump, it will sit there for four hours before the pump turns on. And the reason that does that is it allows enough water to build up in the tank in order to not pump pump down to the level of the pump and you run your pump dry. However, in his case, he has a redundant off switch, which wouldn't allow it to happen anyway, but that's the intent. So when it's energized, it will be off for four hours and it will cycle on for two minutes, off for four hours, two minutes, off for four hours, two minutes, until the water level comes down to shut off the float that turns the pump on and off. Since we've set this based on his schematic uh, that was provided by the septic installer, we need to write down inside of the panel the amount of time on and the amount of time off. So he's gonna go ahead and write that down in this block. Then we're gonna come over here and the pump specifications. So we need to go get the paperwork out for the pump, get the brand, the model serial number, uh, the horsepower and the other stuff that is in the blocks, a uh, drawdown per gallons. Um, and, we'll spec and that'll all be in the drawing that comes with the pump and we'll write that all in here. Don't worry, get in, go in here. The floats for the next blocks down, so the high timer override, low level cutout, and redundant specified in feet. So we will go measure those real quick and we'll write those measurements down here. And then the installer. Now this is installed by us, uh, so we are going to put our name down. So when the inspection the inspector comes out once a year here in Mason County, they'll see that he installed the system and since I've walked him through how everything works, there shouldn't be any major issues. Um, that's the basic overview of how to set this pump panel up. Uh, the wiring itself 
uh, I kind of covered in the, a previous clip, but I wanted to go over a couple of things because I misspoke earlier in the video. Um, the section over here with the little yellow uh, clips on the end of the wires, those are all of the floats. And there's a, a schematic kind of like this one behind the wires that tell you which one to plug it into. It's pretty self-explanatory. You should be able to figure that out. Um, the pump in the tank comes back into the panel through this conduit, comes up and plugs into this solenoid. The solenoid then runs over to this breaker, the breaker runs back to this bus bar, and the power from the house through here comes into one and two, which is the power to the pump. The panel itself is powered from a separate breaker, and that's three and four slots, so that power powers all the stuff inside the panel. Um, this allows you to, if you had an emergency situation, you lost power, you could just power the pump on a backup generator or something like that and not have to run the panel and it would allow you to temporarily, if you had a good understanding of how this worked, to utilize your septic system in an emergency situation. Um, I do have a, an extra external switch down here that allows you to turn on and off the pump um, right here from this section in case you had to do some troubleshooting down the line. So he's going to go ahead and go get me the information for the pump and we'll write that all in here. Um, yeah, it pretty much covers the panel. Uh, one of the main things, if you were to have a problem, you'd really want to check first with these two fuses. They provide you an extra fuse right here. So you would come out and check these two fuses after you shut power off to the panel. If the little wire in the fuse is broke, you'd replace that and go get yourself an extra spare fuse for later on. Um, if, it's be if it's more than that, I'd recommend calling a septic person to come out and take a look at it. So we're down here at the drain field, which is over here to my left, uh, and we are doing the test on the drain field itself, which we've turned the pump on, and then we have holes at the end of each of the lateral runs, and we have to get each uh, hole, which I'll spin you around so it'll make sense. So you can see the ends down there, and you see the water coming out of them, so there's four of them and there's one over here too. Um, so we are adjusting each valve inside of the manifold box, which is down here to my right now, to adjust how much water goes down each of the runs. So we're going to go, I'm going to go down here with the tape measure, make sure we're all above 24 and that they're all pretty even uh, all the way across, uh, which means equal amounts of water are going to each individual uh, lateral. Looks pretty good right now. I'm actually gonna go down there and start taking a measurement and see where we're at. So they're controlled via this box in the ground. These two boxes have the valve manifolds in them. So we built the valve manifold here. So that one goes here, and the next valve is down and over and you can kind of get the idea for the rest of them. So you can see how the valves are all sort of adjusted slightly, not open all the way, but not closed all the way. And that makes it so that the water coming out of the end is even, or as even as we're gonna get it. We're gonna straighten up that last one right there. And that's pretty much it. We put drainage rock in and under these things so when we backfill the dirt around here, they, drain the water away from there and the carry line goes all the way up to the house so we finished filling the trench up with gravel this trench goes all the way down to hard pan and then it goes six inches yeah six inches into the hard pan which was pretty hard on my Okay, so this wraps up video number four for the septic system install we covered the control panel wiring making sure the floats were wired correctly also covered the test at the end before the septic inspector comes out and does the inspection. And we will continue on with another couple of videos after this one. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. It always helps me out with future videos.